Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is, as you might know, my favorite operating system, Linux Mint. This has a new release, 21.1. This is very exciting. There's lots of mini changes. Get your coffee, get your popcorn, and without further ado, let's quickly dive right in. So to give you a little bit of background, Linux Mint 21.1 Cinnamon is the version I'm going to be checking out. It's a long-term support release, which will be supported until 2027. And it comes with a lot of updated software and brings many, many refinements, new features to your desktop experience to make it way more comfortable. So the moment you log into Linux Mint, you're going to be greeted by this screen. Welcome to Linux Mint. You can have your first steps your documentation help and you can even contribute to Linux Mint which if you're using Linux Mint I would highly recommend now inside first steps you can change the colors for example this is green as you can see a little something changed this is the start menu this is the tiny hint of accent color which IMO looks amazing this is the Nemo file manager and it looks I mean, I'm at a loss of words. The yellow icons, they look amazing. And with a hint of green, you can change the color. It'll change it to whatever you choose. So there you go. Aqua, I believe. And let's go with red. Absolutely beautiful. You can see the hint of accent color here around the search bar, indicating which of the windows are open. It looks gorgeous. So I'm going to move it back to green for the time being because I love green. So anyway, with this out of the way, let's quickly dive into how Linux Mint is different this time around. Let's begin with the taskbar or the bottom panel as we like to call it. At the right hand side, one of the new additions is the show desktop button. So suppose you have a bunch of windows open, you got this file explorer, you got your terminal, you got let's say Firefox, and your desktop is in a complete mess. What do you do? You click on this icon and it takes you back to the desktop. They have also done away with a lot of the icons that would otherwise appear on your desktop. Clicking start some of the new things that are added this time was a vibrant colors. So let's check out the colors. We will go to the settings menu. Wait for it to open and go to themes. So as you can see, the vibrant colors are here. Minty, aqua, blue. They look amazing. Now, if you want to, if you can't differentiate between these and the older colors so these are the legacy colors which I believe were available up to mint 20.3 so if you look at my older videos you're gonna see some of these colors in action but for now these are more vibrant and IMO they are very very beautiful now apart from this you have your cursor so as you might have already noticed this looks way better this is so much modern you saw the ball of death that, that people call in mac land from advita the option is there if you want to use it but bibata modern classic i'm not sure if i'm pronouncing the name correctly looks pretty good and you have the white version and you have the black version i prefer the black version so i'm gonna stick with it and if you want to go back the dmz white and the DMZ black are also there. Anyway, moving on to the icons. As I said, the icons have a have received a modern flair. So this is mint Y, mint Y aqua, blue, brown, purple. You can either mix and match or you can change the color directly to affect the entire desktop. So let's go ahead and change it to aqua and for the desktop icons i'm gonna keep it as minty red i believe that's that's a that's a combination and at the bottom is the desktop so how you want your desktop layout to be so right now it's minty dark so the default theme is actually a composite of light and dark themes so it looks pretty good i mean i this is how it should be but if you want to change it to a white theme be my guest and 
go over it, change it to white theme. It doesn't look bad. It looks different. It looks cool. If you are in for it, if you like it, by all means, go switch it over. But for the time being, I'm going to keep it a dark. So let's go to maybe aqua. And now this feels a lot more familiar. Now to accentuate and to not distract the users by having vibrant colors, something which they did is they reduced the accent color and the overall operating system. So one beautiful example of this is the home screen. I mean, is the file manager. In here, as you can see on the left, it's completely white earlier. It was dark gray color. And when you selected the icons, it would also select the icon along with the text. But now this has been changed and we only select the text. And also when you hover over each of these icons, you get a tiny indication that they have been hovered over. So IMO, it looks pretty good. Let's check the version number. So this is Nemo 5.6.0. So this would tell you that we are in Cinnamon version 5.6.0, which is the latest version. Now let's move over to the system settings panel. And I have a few other things to show you. Let's go to driver manager. Now the driver manager here has received many improvements. I am running this mint in my virtual machine, so it might not be a proper reflection of a bare metal install, but bear with me here because the manager now runs in user mode. So you no longer need a password to launch it, which as you already saw, but it wasn't the case before. Offline support has been redesigned. The driver manager now shows a dedicated screen. If you are offline, I am not. So it's looking for drivers. And you can also have it detect a live USB stick. So that is good. Now, as you can see, no drivers needed. So there is literally nothing to do here. But if it did, then we would have a bunch of options and we could pick and choose what we want and what we don't want. Now let's move on to the update manager. Update manager is one of the better places in Linux Mint. It is very handy if you don't want to mess around inside the terminal. So what is new inside this update manager? As you can see, it tells me to update. I'm not going to because this is for a video, but Flatpak support was updated to, was added to the update manager, which is absolutely crucial in 2022 and 2023 onward. Now, speaking of Flatpaks, let's go to the software manager. I believe this one. The icon, see, it looks absolutely amazing. Now, the software manager features a refreshed user interface, which makes it easier to distinguish between flat packs and system apps. So, for example, let's open something for like Spotify. Once you open Spotify, one of the new features around here is that you can change from the system package to the flat pack. It's just a delight to see that this is so much better than last time. And I, I seriously can't get over the icons. I mean, the cursor, it looks so pretty. It has different colors in different corners. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's absolutely delightful. Okay, so we're not going to install Spotify. We're going to head back and let's take a second to appreciate how the software center looks. It's not as flashy as something like GNOME 40 plus, but this does the job. This is very practical and I don't have a single complaint. Now, another thing which is new here is the ISO verification tool. So it's very important to verify the integrity and authenticity of your ISO images if you're doing something like a fresh install of any operating system. So Linux Mint actually has the provision to do it this time around. You can right click on your ISO image and select verify and Linux Mint will automatically go ahead and do it for you. Another thing which is new this time around is the USB image writer. So you can choose an ISO and you can write to an image. It is as simple as that. Now, along with this, another one is the USB stick formatter. So again, just like Windows where you can right click and do this here, you can select an USB, you can select any USB stick. You can choose whether it should be FAT32, XFAT, NTFS, or EXT4 for me. And you can obviously change the name of your USB stick. Now comes the part that I am most excited about for every Linux Mint release. It may sound childish, but the backgrounds 
always blow me away. So Vanessa was the 21 release. The wallpapers are pretty good. Now comes the most difficult part. I'm going to have to pick one of these. I don't know. Honestly, they look absolutely amazing. All of these. They're stunning. Now, 21.1 is known as Vera or Vera. Or Vera? I'm not sure. Anyhow, the wallpapers, again, I mean, whoever chose these wallpapers, they have an excellent taste. That's, I mean, it's implied, pretty much. Now let's try out a few of these wallpapers, because they look stunning. And I have a 27-inch monitor, and they just pop. The colors pop. It looks so pretty. Estonia. Let's check out. Oh, this is that style of imagery where you have that lens. I forget the name, but there is a type of lens you can use to create a miniaturized effect. I love this. Anyway, let's open the terminal. Let's check the kernel number. So out of the box, it is shipped with 5.15 kernel. One of the problems I have seen with Linux Mint is that over time, the kernel becomes very, very old. 5.15 kernel was the one with which Ubuntu 22.04 launched, so that is the one they're giving to you right now. I would highly recommend and suggest to you to use the Edge version of Linux Mint. Edge version of Linux Mint has a faster moving kernel, and that would allow you to play your latest games, allow you to have your latest message drivers if you're using something like AMD or Intel graphics cards even. So I would highly recommend that. As of now, I don't believe the Edge version has been released because it, let's let's say it, this kernel is quite new. Even though Pop! OS received 6.0.6 .6, like yesterday or something. I updated yesterday, so yeah. So keep, this is something to keep in mind or if you know how to change the kernel manually, you could absolutely go for it. I mean, if you're using Linux, maybe you have that capability already. There are other minor improvements, uh, which I, I wouldn't say minor, but there are other improvements. A search entry was added to the key binding preferences. Preferred applications can now be filtered by categories. And themes are sorted in a way that separates light and dark themes, just as we saw before. The system info screen shows the operating system logo. And the window placement mode is back. It was lost during the Linux 5. Point, I mean, Cinnamon 5.4 days during the Mutter rebase period, but now it's back. And apart from this, you also don't need a password when removing a flat pack. The same goes for simple shortcuts in local applications. Overall, the usage of the password has been reduced significantly. Anyway, guys, so with that, we come to the end of this video. It was it was amazing to talk about Linux Mint 21.1. It would be supported until 2027, so you have nothing to worry about if you're using this operating system. If you're on Linux Mint, it's a pretty, pretty good operating system by Clément Leferbe. And I hope you enjoyed my video, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Peace.